Hey guys, salam alaikum and welcome back to our channel. Salam everyone, what's going on? So today we are going to answer all of your questions regarding our labor, well not our, my labor yes. and delivery experience. I have right a lot to talk room. about for our, my delivery process as well because <laughs> I feel like you know I was a part of all of it. So I'll give you guys... I mean you were, 50-50. Yeah, I'll give you guys tips on what to do, how to prepare, <laughs> what to eat the night before. I got you guys. So just stay tuned for everything. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be fun. So a few days ago, I asked you guys to leave all of your questions regarding this topic on my Instagram story so that way we can go back to it, refer to it, and then answer yeah. those questions here on YouTube. So with that being said, let's get started. Let's go. Did you have a natural birth or scheduled emergency C-section? I actually had a scheduled induction because I passed the 40-week mark. Mm -hmm. I remember talking to my doctor and I told her, I'm like, listen, I can't continue on <laughs> yeah. another week like this because at 40 weeks it was really really difficult to move around to do anything i was just very tired and i didn't like that feeling i was just so sleepy and yeah. sluggish and just i didn't like that feeling of being in bed all day um, so i told my doctor i'm like if i pass my 40 weeks then i want to schedule an induction and she agreed so we went ahead and scheduled a day that would be convenient for us both because mm -hmm. i definitely wanted the doctor who was seeing me throughout my entire pregnancy to be the same one to deliver our baby yeah uh we got in we registered amaya we got the room and then she came like four or five hours later i would say the perk of having a scheduled induction is that by the time you go to the hospital everything is ready for you yes the room is ready the nurses are ready like medication is ready um so You're i enjoyed prepared. it yeah, yeah i was prepared i knew what to bring i wasn't overwhelmed were you embarrassed for your husband to see everything <laughs> Absolutely not. I was not. I was not embarrassed whatsoever. Were you embarrassed? No, man. Like we're yeah. grown ups here. Yeah. No, I was not. If, if anything, um, we had a madhouse. Yeah. We had so many people in the room. How many minutes did it take you to push the baby out? Um, it took me three hours. Three hours. I started at six thirty in the afternoon and delivered at nine thirty at night. Yeah. Um, but they were the longest three hours of my life. There's a lot of pain. She's in a lot of, a pain. lot of pain. Yeah. What was the most painful part of labor and delivery? The contractions. Yeah. Oh my God. And More like, than the pushing. No, no, no. The contractions were wow. like insane. Insane. They were horrible. What would you like for men that don't have contractions? What would like, if you can give me an example of a, like, the strongest stomach ache, the, oh, no. someone punching you, someone oh, no. tearing you, like... Yeah, it's like a literal, like, imagine someone is just, like, tearing you, like, Ooh. like, ripping... Your insides? Ripping, yeah, ripping, Ooh. just ripping your insides, like, over and over and over Extreme again. Extreme, like, period pains. Oh, period pain is nothing. That's why females are a thousand times stronger oh, and can handle that. You can't. All right, Maya, since we talked about that, the next question is, would you do it again? <laughs> Literally the first thought after giving birth to Adam, I'm like, I don't know how people do this again and again and again. So at that moment, I was like, absolutely not. I am so happy with one, one and done. But now that we have our baby and like just having him around, I kind of like I can do it again, but I don't want to do it again right now. I'm good for like a solid year. Inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can wait. Yeah, we can wait. Okay, Maya, how did you manage your stress and anxiety levels? Um, well, I would say I'm pretty good when it comes to managing my stress and anxiety, mm -hmm. like in general. But a good tip is to have people you love around you, mm -hmm. you during this time of uh, delivery because it can get a little intense. Yeah. So you just want to be surrounded by like your friends or like family. Um, I had like a bunch of people making me laugh at the hospital mm -hmm. and taking my mind off of it. Like yeah. Tata was there, like just yeah, literally yeah. she made the experience so fun. My best that. friend, she was there um, just like joking and, and yeah. trying to make me laugh. I can't say that I had a bad experience, you know, because I had so many people that I love in that room yeah. and it made it feel so special and so yeah. fun. All right, man. how painful was it out of a hundred? 
Let's just keep it real. Yeah. Out of a hundred, I mean, what would you say? You saw me. I would, I would say you're definitely at a max style pain. Yes, like you're definitely. Like you passed a hundred. A hundred, passed a hundred. Hey, here's my question: Was it more? Okay, was it better or worse than what you heard? Like, was it more painful than you imagined, or less painful than you imagined? Oh no, it was way more painful than I imagined. Yeah. Way more, and it honestly just depends who you ask because yeah. there are some people who have a high pain tolerance. So they would tell you like, oh, it's not that bad. Yeah. But with someone who has a low pain tolerance, they'll tell you it's the worst. Yeah. Now I would say I'm in the middle, but with that being said, guys, it is, it's no joke. Labor pain is intense and I don't think there's anything that can prep you for it. The only thing that could possibly make it easier is when you have like your fifth and sixth one. That By that point, you're like, okay, you recognize the pain. Yeah. yeah, it's not as bad, yeah. but oh my God, for your first? Oh man. It's painful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Wyatt, well, how was your first poop? <laughs> oh my god, it sounds like such a funny question, but that's a really good question. Yeah? That's a really good question. Now, I wish someone had warned me about this topic prior to it happening. To it happening, yes. Because when it first happened, I'm like, what's going on? Like, I can't even use it. Oh man. It was. First of all, I teared, okay? So imagine tearing yeah. and having to push. Ooh. Not a good combination. And also you're constipated, which is something that people don't talk about yeah. after delivering. Um, so the nurses gave me something to take for constipation. And I'm like, what do you mean? Am I really gonna be constipated? That's and they're like, oh yeah. Worst. You yeah, feel so, bloated, you feel oh your digestive oh is not God. like kicking, like it's not, not everything is working the same, no, I would imagine. No, absolutely, I mean, your body is a different body after delivery, for oh, sure. Yeah. But yes, to answer the question, my first poop was horrible, yeah. horrible. Um, it took a while, like I, I wasn't able to use the, the, the bathroom or yeah. number two right away. It took like two days, <sighs> and the pain was just... It was so bad. It's pain on top of pain on top of pain. So just get ready for your first poop to hurt. From what I'm imagining. Okay, Amaya. Any tips for postpartum? Whew. Okay, so this is a whole different conversation. Yeah. Uh, postpartum, just like, okay. So just like labor and delivery is no joke. Yeah. Postpartum is a different level of no joke. Yeah. I mean, it is... <laughs> Just when you think things are over, no, there comes postpartum. Yeah. And um, there are a few tips that I can give you. Um, one of them being what to take in order to help with your recovery. And I actually did some research of my own um, just a few days before heading to the hospital just because I knew that postpartum was going to be rough. Yeah. Now, along with that, I found seed. And for those who have never heard of seed, Seed is actually a daily symbiotic, which means it's a prebiotic and a probiotic, and it's the absolute best. It helps with digestion, skin health, heart health, and immune function. So after giving birth, I was left feeling extremely bloated, mm -hmm. super tired, and like I already said, I was not able to use the bathroom. Yeah. And it was so painful and so uncomfortable. I mean, you even remember, right? Yeah, no, she was having a hard time like using the bathroom. Like she would go every so often, try to do her pushing and then come back and say, no, I still Nothing have this comfort. Working. I'm still having some pain. She was even worried. So like it, she needed like something to help her get it out. Yeah, you know what I mean? and this is something pretty common with, yeah. you know, the first time you use the bathroom after delivery. Yeah. And within a couple of days, it started to feel more comfortable to use the restroom. Yeah. I wasn't feeling as bloated and I wasn't as tired. There are so many incredible benefits to taking seed. I've personally noticed a big difference after yeah. taking it. As you guys know, your gut health plays a big function on the way that you feel. So it's very important to take care of it. Yeah. And seed was one of the best ways to take care of my gut. So seed supports digestive health, meaning it eases bloating and improves your stool hydration. Seed is a symbiotic, which means it's a prebiotic and a probiotic two in one and it has 24 clinically and scientifically studied probiotic strains for the whole body's health and it also promotes clear and healthy skin I mean you remember after giving birth what happened to my face you're breaking out I yeah. broke out and it wasn't necessarily like zits it wasn't face. zits it was just like bumps like 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 tiny ones it was there for like at least three to four days yeah. and I didn't know if it was normal or abnormal 
but it was just something that was happening and I couldn't believe it because throughout my entire pregnancy my skin was very clear. healthy yeah. and clear mm -hmm. like I had no problems with my skin alhamdulillah during my pregnancy but after I delivered like all of a sudden my skin just like broke out in little little tiny bumps yeah. um, so after taking seed I did notice a big difference on my skin and apart from that seed also helps maintain its blood cholesterol levels to stay in the normal range and another great thing about seed is that they are vegan now this is one of you know Muslims concerns when taking any vitamins yeah. or pills in general we need to make sure that we don't have any like pork, pork product. products we gotta make them. sure it's better that the pills we take are halal so Vegan friendly is definitely good for us. Seed is also gluten free, dairy free, and preservative free. Now you can use code OMAYA for 20% off. They were kind enough to give us a discount code. I'm going to leave everything you need on the description box below, so make sure to check it out. Um, but yes, for sure, this is something that helped me with my postpartum recovery. Yeah. All right, Maya, how is breastfeeding going? I'm struggling with breastfeeding now. I just gave formula to my baby. She's three weeks. Okay. Now, breastfeeding was a little rough, yeah. I would say, in the yeah. beginning. So I actually needed a lot of help to get Adam to latch onto me. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't doing so in the beginning. Um, I had to get a manual pump to yeah. to pump and then feed him through like a little... Bottles. No, not a bottle, a syringe. Yes, at the beginning. In the yes, beginning. yes, yes, yes. Yes, just because he wasn't latching on, you know, newborns to take a while to latch on. Yeah. Um, it doesn't usually happen as we see on TV, like yeah. you deliver the baby, baby put this place on your chest and it's eating all of a sudden yeah, so yeah. quickly. Um, so that didn't happen for me. I would say it took maybe three days for him to properly latch, latch on. on. Yeah. Um, and it, it worked fine after three or four days yeah. actually. When we got home, um, I kept like trying and insisting for him to like latch on yeah. and he was able to do so. Now, after a week of him being born, my mom um, came to our house mm -hmm. to sleep here and just help us around and also like just give us time to sleep because I wasn't sleeping much. Yeah. So I started pumping and giving my mom bottles so she can feed Adam throughout mm -hmm. the night, yeah. right? Because that's the whole idea of her sleeping over is for her to help, him yeah, help us and feed him through the night so that way we can sleep. Mm -hmm. Now, doing that was not the smartest thing because Adam loved the bottle so much mm -hmm. that when I tried breastfeeding him, he would not accept it. He's, He's like, frustrated. Yeah, he was so frustrated. He's like, what is this? No, I'm not used to this. I, I want the bottle. This. I'm not going to lie. It kind of hurt a little. He felt away. Yeah, I felt away. She stopped talking for two weeks. <laughs> Looking at like tips on how I could get my baby to latch on to me again. Yeah. So basically, what I found out was you just have to keep insisting, keep being annoying, keep having your baby like latch on to you, yeah. um, especially when they're super, super, super hungry. That is the best time to have them like get it, get on your breast to see if yeah. they, they're so desperate that they'll want to just like. Yeah, take it of course. Um, and basically after trying for a week straight I just did not give up for a week straight I kept like insisting mm -hmm. I kept pushing him on my breast and eventually I guess I annoyed the kid enough for him to want to yeah. and oh, now yeah. he is breastfeeding so yeah. now he's doing both he is yeah. taking the bottle and he's also breastfeeding I don't know if that's just Adam yeah. um, but it, it ended up working because I insisted so much. How long did you stay in the hospital? We stayed in the hospital for two nights and three yeah. days. Two nights and three days, pretty much the first day of labor. We stayed there delivering labor and then we went to another room. And the reason we stayed a day longer is because Adam was circumcised. So we had to wait a whole 24 hours for him to do that. Then wait for the next morning for the doctor to make sure everything is good with him. Then we got discharged. Is it true the hospital bill in the U.S. is expensive? <laughs> yes. Uh, you, like, it's you like have, a joke at this point. Yeah, you, it's a big bill. If you have the right insurance, uh, it, it's, it's easier, but you're still going to have to pay some sort of way. Yeah. Depending on the insurance plan and not to get into like numbers and details, but there's something called like deductible and you have to meet a certain dollar amount before you're fully covered 100% by your insurance. So In the U.S. In the U.S. There's something else that I found out as we were in the hospital yeah. that 
when they offer you pain medication, those are meds. All of that, they're charging you for it. It's not something, it's not complimentary. So in the beginning, I'm like, yes, yes, I need another one. Yes, I need another one. I'll stay an extra day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll stay an extra day. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I want him to be circumcised, so I'll stay another night. All of that is being added on to your bill. They're not just giving it to you for free and yeah. for you to be comfortable, as well as the epidural. I mean, obviously we knew it's an extra charge, yeah. but it is quite expensive. Yeah. I did not think it would be that expensive. Um, but you're looking at an average of like 15,000 to 20,000 yeah. for delivering a baby mm -hmm. with an epidural. Again, it depends on the amount of medications that you're taking. Also, if it's a C-section, not C-section. Ours wasn't a C-section, so it's a little bit less. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's yeah. very expensive in the US. Just make sure your coverage is right. Ask as many questions as you can. Uh, so when the time is right, you're not like surprised. Yeah. Okay, Maya, last question. How was the first month with the baby? Can we answer this with one word? Sure. Yeah. Come up with a word. I already have my word. Okay. Okay. My word is rough. Rough. It was rough. I would say overwhelming. That's one word, right? It is. <laughs> okay. If it's not, it doesn't matter. I'll tell you why. So I had a expectations versus reality type of thing. And Don't we all? Yeah, my my expectations was, from what I was told, is the baby's gonna chill, eat a little bit, sleep. All he wants to do is sleep because he's so tired. That's what I heard and was told. So I'm like, okay, this baby's just gonna want to eat, sleep. It's all good. I did not think <laughs> that 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., he's crying, eating, crying, just... <laughs> very emotional so many different things diaper change this it was a lot and knowing me and Omaya like our lifestyle is very different we yeah. haven't had this level of responsibility responsibility so having change of schedule change of day oh my God. it's absolutely uh, overwhelming because you know we had our own schedule but your schedule gets thrown out the window and it becomes that baby's schedule but Right now, I feel like, alhamdulillah, we've gotten better. Yes. There's still a few moments where I just look at myself and I'm like, yo, what am I doing? But we've we figured it out a little bit. Or try. Yeah, we're trying. Try. Okay. But yes, I 100% I agree with everything that you yeah. said. Ugh, it was just so rough. I wasn't prepared, even though we wanted this. Yeah. And we thought we were prepared. Nothing prepares you exactly. for a that's, newborn. That's what I was going to say. Like, nobody prepares oh. you and... It, it just just make sure you free up your day, your night, whatever you I can take I don't think they have up. an option. Whatever, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Whenever you can take it up, take it up. Don't wait and say, oh, I usually sleep at 12. No, whenever you can take it up, take it up. And when he's sleeping, go sleep because he's going to keep you can up. Can I say uh, something? Uh, uh, having, I, I did not know that having family around would make such a difference. Big difference. I don't know. Honestly, like I really, I don't understand and more power to the parents who have children away from their families. Yeah. Like, like, li like live on their own. Live on their own. Away. Yes. I don't know how you guys can do it and mashallah and I, I think you guys are so, so strong. Yes. I could never do that. Yep. And I say never because I have been needing my mom more than I have ever needed her before. Like, yeah. I thought I was independent, somewhat independent. You but are, but this is different. Once you have a baby, you really need help. Yeah. So, I would say number one tip is to have people around you um, for the first couple of days, even first couple of weeks yeah. uh, when you bring your baby home because you will True. need the extra hand. True. So that was all for today's video. Yes. Thank you guys so, so much for your questions, um, for all of your love, the lovely messages yes. you guys have been sending us since our baby was born. Like Omaya said, like, thank you guys so much. You know, you guys are the best supporters out there and we appreciate every single one of you. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any ideas for some other videos for us, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, we'll see you next time. Salam. Salam.